Time travel has been a staple of the science fiction genre since its inception, and it's also been a topic hotly debated within the scientific community. Like, would Marty McFly really disappear if he went back in time and accidentally caused his mom to fall in love with him? Or would John Connor really cease to exist if the T-800 managed to kill Kyle Reese? But before you go thinking that this episode is all about the theories around time travel, stop because that's not what we're doing here. No, we're talking about the Hubble telescope and its ultra deep field. Using this system, Hubble is effectively able to achieve what thousands of nerds speculating in chat rooms and forums never could. And no, I don't mean rewriting the Star Wars prequels. Or sequels now. Whatever. Hubble UDF is effectively able to peer back in time to the earliest moments of the universe's history, and we're going to be taking a look at how it works and what revelations have been uncovered with this amazing technology. But first, be sure to drop me a like, comment your favorite time travel based novel, movie, TV show, or video game. Smash that subscribe button and ring that bell to never miss a video. I'm Eric Malachite, author of Mind's Horizon, which doesn't involve time travel, but does involve tons of cosmic shenanigans. And this is Science Get. Hubble UDF is able to see up to 12 billion light years away from us, effectively peeling back the curtain to a time period just 1 billion years removed from the Big Bang that started it all. But how does it work? Well, a deep field is basically a long exposure focusing on a small field of view. In this case, a very tiny portion of our night sky. The reason why Hubble uses a long exposure is so that it can observe points of light that are extremely faint to us here on Earth. The ultra deep field is essentially the deepest field of visible light that we can observe, at least right now. Who knows, maybe someday we'll image the light from the frickin' Big Bang or something. Or we'll see Azathoth and all lose our minds. Hey, that's not a bad idea for a Call of Cthulhu campaign. Using this approach, Hubble has been able to capture galaxies at every possible stage of their evolution across the universe's 13.5 billion year history, and a few surprises as well. Let's move on to some of the discoveries. Cue the title. Within the tiny area that Hubble focused on using its UDF, a spot in the constellation Formax, there are more than 10,000 galaxies, each of them at various stages of evolution throughout the history of the universe. One of the major surprises that emerged from the UDF was the fact that galaxies started forming as soon as 450 million years after the Big Bang. The field of observable light has been expanded, thanks to infrared imaging systems like NICMOS all the way to 13.2 billion years. So close to the edge of everything and probably madness. Now, this is far sooner than scientists originally thought galaxies could have formed. What this has effectively been able to do is allow astronomers to map the history of star and galaxy formation, as well as the density of both throughout various epochs spanning the universe's history. Amazingly, as you can see in this time lapse of Hubble UDF's first observations, searching all the way to its infrared and extreme deep field observations, which sounds like an early 2000s X Games event. Wow, that's probably not a reference that any of you get. I'm getting old. Before Hubble UDF, scientists didn't think that galaxies like our own could have formed any earlier than 3 to 4 billion years after the Big Bang. But since then, we've discovered disk-shaped galaxies stretching all the way back to 1.5 billion years after the Big Bang. The Wolf Disk Galaxy is the oldest known spiral or disk-shaped galaxy known to us currently, and its existence basically forced the scientific community to rethink and rewrite everything they thought they knew about spiral galaxy formation. Although it's important to note that this particular galaxy was not imaged by Hubble, but the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array in Chile, though it's likely that it would not have been able to image this galaxy without the way being paved forward by UDF. Now, the NICMOS images are probably not going to be surpassed until the James Webb Telescope is finally finished and brought online. Then who knows what it'll find? What was that?
As mentioned in the previous section, the theories and models for the formation of the earliest galaxies have been revamped thanks to Hubble Ultra Deep Field. Galaxies are essentially the building blocks of the universe, what the NASA website describes as island cities of stars, which is poetic enough and I didn't think I could reward it without destroying the mental image. Even before Hubble's optical equipment was repaired in 1993, there was evidence suggesting that galaxies stretching closer to the Big Bang were more compact than the ones we see today. The first theory is that galaxies formed from cold dark matter, which describes how the universe could have gone from a smooth state, like what we see in the cosmic microwave background, to its current less evenly distributed state. The problems with this theory are as follows. Simulations of cold matter reveal much more peaked density distributions than what's observed in the rotational curves of actual galaxies. Cold dark matter theory suggests that galaxies should have large numbers of smaller dark matter halos, which would be more numerous than the number of small dwarf galaxies we've observed. The theory also suggests that galaxies should be distributed randomly, but instead they're seen orbiting in thin planar structures. And finally, if galaxies grew in a kind of hierarchy, then more massive galaxies would have required multiple mergers with larger galaxies. When large galaxies go through a merger, they usually develop a large bulge. Yet of the galaxies we've observed so far, none of them have massive bulges. And large disk type galaxies are actually pretty common, even stretching back to a mere billion years removed from the Big Bang. So the cold dark matter theory, which was the first proposed in the 1980s and 1990s, probably isn't up to the task of explaining this, even if its proponents suggest that there are solutions to these problems. But given the newer observations taken by Hubble, we know that there must have been a period of intense star formation between the Big Bang and when the earliest galaxy currently observed, GNZ11, which is an irregular shaped galaxy, formed. This thing contains 1% the mass of the Milky Way, yet the formation of the stars it contains was rapid, taking place over a period of just 40 million years. The formation of the first stars likely culminated in the collection of the first galaxies. But as we've seen by the Wolf disk, spiral galaxies are at the very least able to form 1.5 billion years after the Big Bang. So galaxies had to have started forming at least 500 million years out, or a bit earlier than that, ending what's known as the Cosmic Dark Age with the first galaxies, some of them being quasars. This period of galaxy formation continues to the Cosmic Renaissance, ending the Dark Ages and leading us to a point one billion years after the Big Bang, when the universe starts to look much like it does today. The universe at this stage is basically transparent, which is basically how it looks now. Now, as far as what role dark matter plays in the formation of galaxies, we're not 100% sure on, as we haven't really identified what exactly dark matter is. There are some other theories which suggest that hot dark matter might have played a role in early galaxy formation as well. But that's a whole other can of worms and one that might be better saved for another video where we can really dive into the most up-to-date information on theories surrounding galaxy formation. If you dug this video, be sure to hit that like button, comment your favorite galaxy or stellar object, and whether or not you'd like to see a video on the theories behind galaxy formation. And be sure to smash that subscribe button and ring that bell to never miss a video. I'm Eric Malachi, and I'll see you next time.